reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God and even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since therefore we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. And some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of Arapagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too, and maidens, old men and boys. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise his name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. 
Everything the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In two years, it is going to be the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, which is traditionally marked with the uh, posting of 95 debate theses by Martin Luther on the 31st of October, 1517. So in a couple more years, it'll be the 500th anniversary, okay? But in two more years, it'll be also the 100th anniversary of the apparitions to the three children in Fatima. And so it's appropriate to remember it today. Today is also the day back in 1981 when Pope John Paul II was shot and nearly killed in St. Peter's Square in an attempt on his life uh, by Mehmet Ali Aga, probably in the pay of the KGB, but nevertheless, he did recover. And he was convinced that one of the reasons he recovered, I guarantee you that one of the reasons he recovered was the fact that the bullets somehow missed his main uh, um, abdominal aorta. And he gave credit to the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Fatima, for saving his life. And in fact, when he was healed, he made a pilgrimage to Fatima. And that bullet is now a part of the crown that she wears, that statue wears. So it's useful for us to remember the fundamental message of Fatima. Pray for the conversion of sinners. Nice, simple, straightforward. Now, you're going to get people who are going to point out all the sinners that you need to be praying for for their conversion, okay? Let's back off of that. Let's remember what St. Paul says in the first letter to Timothy. Of all these sinners, I myself am the greatest. So we start by praying for number one, for the conversion of me, okay? Well, you can pray for the conversion of me too. That's okay. But we start by praying for the conversion of ourselves, okay? And then ask the Lord then for all those who have embraced or are, are tied up by the bonds and the, and, and, the, and the pains of sin for their conversion and for their healing and for being broken free from that stuff, to be broken free from it. There is so much in the world right now that is filled with hatred, with bitterness, with resentment. This is what we want to pray to be undone. And so in the spirit of Our Lady of Fatima, we can pray then on a regular ongoing basis for the conversion of sinners, starting with number one, for peace in the world, for an end to warfare everywhere. And may God bless us with those prayers. Let us stand and pray now.